I'll be honest, Performance Max campaigns for me are really hit or miss. In some accounts, they do really well and we see good results with them, so we keep giving them more budget. In others, not so good. They end up having some weird performance and sometimes we end up turning them off. But one of the things that we found really helps to improve the performance of Performance Max campaigns is to treat the search component exactly like you would for your regular search campaigns. By that, we mean going through the search terms and finding new negatives to add to your campaigns. Now, when Performance Max was first launched, you couldn't find that information anywhere. But Google has since made it more available. So in this video, we want to show you two different ways that you can find the search term performance and then talk about what you should do with it once you've got it. The best way to show you how to find the search terms for your Performance Max campaigns, unfortunately, comes in a live client account. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any data to show you. But you can probably also guess that since we're looking at search terms in a live client account, that means we're going to have to have a lot blurred out. So hopefully you'll still be able to get the process that we're going through here, and you'll just have to take my word for what's actually in the search terms. In this account, we actually have two Performance Max campaigns running. Each has their own slightly different objective, but we've got quite a bit of data to work with. The first way to find the search terms performance for your Performance Max campaigns is to start off by selecting one of the Performance Max campaigns. I'm just going to select this top one, and then I'm going to come over to the Insights and Reports section and click Insights. There are a handful of different metrics that are available here, but if we scroll down a bit, we will find Consumer Spotlight, and the first group for this account is going to be the Search Term Insights. And here's where we're going to find all of the information around the search terms for the account. First, you're going to find the search category that's listed here, but you can open these drop downs and find more specific terms that are below it that are part of the category. So each one of these different search categories has a handful of search terms that make up that category. Unfortunately, almost all of these are branded because that's also what Performance Max does. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But that means that I can't really show you what any of these look like. But for each of these, we have the high level search category. There's then a subcategory that makes that up. And then each of the line items listed in here, this one has three, is going to be the actual search term that somebody searched. As you can see here, we have the conversion numbers that are here that started off. There's also search volume. And we can click this drop down and choose a different metric if we wanted to. If we wanted to see what the conversion value was or the number of clicks or the click-through rate, we can do that. We can also click the view detailed report. And then we get a sheet that has all of the different metrics available all in the same space. And we still have the drop downs for the different search terms that are in here. Again, we would still have to blur most of those out. So I'm not going to highlight those. But you do have different date ranges up here. So you either have the last seven days, last 28, or you can customize them. Lastly, you can download this report if you want to and have it in an Excel file. And that might be an easy way to do it. But one thing that I really don't like about this setup is that you have to click each one of these little drop downs to see the different data points. And then each time you open a new one, it closes a previous one. That's not a very easy way to interact with your search terms reports. And if you've been doing this for a while, you know it's easier to just have everything in one space. Again, the download option could be a good solution to that problem. But what I like, and what I think is probably the better solution, is actually to use a script that one of our industry friends put together, Mike Rhodes, that will pull the search terms and all of these metrics from your Performance Max campaigns into a Google Sheet. Here's the page where you can find the script that we're going to use. And we'll link to this in the description down below. But I'm on the Performance Max Search Terms Volume 2 page. I'm just going to click into this area, highlight all, and click Copy. Now I'm going to jump into the Google Ads interface. We're going to go to Tools and Bulk Actions and go to Scripts. We've had some scripts run before. They don't really do a whole lot. But now we're going to create a new script by clicking the blue plus button, New Script. Then in this entire space over here, highlight over all this and paste. I love this little note down here at the bottom. You're awesome too, Mike. Thanks for the script. Now if we scroll back up, one of the first set of instructions up here is to make a copy of the template sheet on Google Drive. So I'm going to highlight over all of this text here, including the copy, copy it, then go up to my browser bar, paste it in. It'll then ask to make a copy. And yes, that's what I want to do. Now we have a copy of the template. What we need to do is then go back up to the URL bar, which I know is outside of the window, but bear with me here. I'm going to copy the URL for the new template page, head back into Google Ads. Right down here in this open space, I'm going to paste the URL because that's what it asked me to do. Sheet URL goes here. Paste your URL in here. 
You can then choose how many days of data you want. Right now it's set to seven. I'm gonna set it to 30. And then minimum number of clicks for your search query. This is really helpful if you have a huge account that has lots of data coming through and you really don't need to spend time looking at terms that only have one or two or eight clicks. This account isn't quite as big, but I am gonna change this to 10 so that every search term that comes through has to have at least 10 clicks within the last 30 days for it to show up in my report. That number is completely subjective to you. You can have the minimum number of clicks be zero. That'll include everything. But again, that's up to you. Really quick, I'm gonna name this script. Then I'm gonna come over here to authorize. We will need to do this twice. Sorry, we gotta block everything out, but I just need to allow the script to run. And then typically I would suggest you always preview whatever your script is gonna look like just to save time. And because I've done this before, I'm not gonna do that on this video, but I would encourage you to always preview a script before you run it. For now, I'm just gonna click run. Yes, run without a preview. And then as I said, we need to authorize it again. Same thing. And now we'll click run one more time. Yes, run without a preview. And within 14 seconds, the script is done running and everything is squared away. So let's hop back into the copy of the template that we made earlier. And this is where all of our data is gonna show up. On this first categories page, we will see just the search category. So there's the campaign name. We've got the first campaign, second after that, and then category label is gonna show up. We'll see all the stats for those. But then the more meaningful page for me is the terms tab. This is going to show all of those terms that were eligible in that performance max campaign. And that brings us to 81. Can you imagine how difficult it is to go back and forth and open up different drop-down menus across all of those different campaigns? It's a little bit of a pain. But again, we also have to blur most of this out because a common trend with performance max, I mentioned it before, most of these terms are brand terms. That's one instance where we would suggest that you determine your strategy around performance max. Do you want it to take the search terms that are branded or do you want it to focus on only non-brand client acquisition, customer acquisition, that sort of thing? Another instance we would suggest is that even though you can't see the cost value associated with each of these different search terms, you can see conversion value. So you could filter this page, apply one here, determine that you only wanna see keywords or search terms, I should say, that have zero conversions associated and then do a descending of the highest number of clicks. And then my guess is something that has a pretty high number of clicks and no conversions probably cost you a good amount. That might be an area where you wanna think about excluding those terms from performance max because they're just not doing what you want them to do. Just like a regular search campaign. This is still PPC, so you're still paying by the click. So if you're driving lots of clicks, no conversions might not be the best term for you. Now the good news is that there are a couple of ways that we can start to control the search terms that are triggered for our Performance Max campaigns. The first is the more drastic option, but it's one that you can do yourself, but you've gotta be very careful with it. That is an account level negative keyword list. Rather than go through all the details, Joe has already put together a video about those. So if you wanna check out account level negative keywords, you can check out the top of the screen right now. But effectively, those negative keywords will apply to every single campaign in your account. So in this instance, I've already told you there's a lot of brand terms coming through for the Performance Max campaigns. If I have a branded search campaign also running in the account, an account level negative keyword list will basically render that search campaign useless because it's blocking out all the brand terms. So if you have search terms coming through that are based on poor performance and you don't think they're a good fit for the account as a whole, you can add them there. But if you're just trying to query map and make sure that you have search terms showing up only in the specified campaigns that you want them to, you're gonna need to take an additional step. Google has a Performance Max campaign modification request form. Quite a mouthful, but basically you get to add in your name, your account login email ID, your contact email address, the Google Ads customer ID, so your account number, and then you need to tell them what types of keyword exclusions you want added and whether you want it at the account level, which we just talked about, or if you want it at the campaign level, and then you need to start determining which campaigns you want it to apply to. As you can see here, they give you a preset list of different options that you have available for Performance Max. They would highly encourage you to use brand exclusions instead. We also have a video that covers brand exclusions that you can check out at the top of the screen right now. They then say for terms that aren't suitable for your brand, use account level negative keywords. Right back to that. There's other terms for display, that sort of thing. But if you don't fit into any of these categories, 
then you can give them a reason as to why you want to exclude those terms through this manual fashion. So it's up to you. Does an account level negative keyword work? Can you use the brand exclusions for Performance Max? Or do you need to go this route and have a Google rep help you out? All told, Performance Max campaigns can be an amazing asset for accounts, but just like all other campaign types, they do take a bit of optimization and regular reviews to make sure that you're getting the best performance out of them. I'd highly encourage you to apply Mike's template to your campaigns and maybe have it run every week, two weeks, every month, depending on the amount of volume you get, and just check and make sure that all of the terms coming through your Performance Max campaigns are a good fit for your business. If you have any additional questions about search terms for Performance Max, brand exclusion lists, account level negative keywords, or anything else in the Google Ads interface, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.